Hey, what's up everybody? This is Tammy. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on beginning Sprite Kit. In this part of the series, you'll learn a bit about collision detection. With Sprite Kit, there are multiple ways to detect collisions, including using the built-in physics engine and also bounding box collision detection. We won't be working with the physics engine in this beginner series. Instead, we'll take the simplest and easiest approach, and that's bounding box collision detection. I know, that's quite a mouthful. With bounding box collision detection, and specifically with Zombie Conga, there are three things you'll need to implement. First, you'll need to find a way of getting all of the cats and the cat ladies in the scene into a list. Actually, two lists. This allows you to check for collisions one by one against the cats and the zombie and the ladies and the zombie. An easy solution is to give names to your nodes when you create them. Then you can use enumerate child nodes with name using block and you would pass in the name and you run that against the scene. What happens then is it finds all of the nodes with whatever name you pass in. Next, you'll loop through each node to check for collisions. Because each node has a frame property that gives you a rectangle representing the node's location on screen, you'll be able to tell if one frame intersects with another. You can do this by using the built-in method CGRECT intersects rect, and then you pass in the two frames to check if they collide. This is what it looks like in code. So without further delay, let's get to it. Let's start by assigning names to our sprites. We'll need a name for our enemy, and we'll need a name for our cat. Scroll down to the function that creates the enemy. We'll start with that one. Right after you create the enemy sprite node, go ahead and give it a name. Now scroll down to the spawn cat function and do the same thing. Except this time we're going to name it cat instead of enemy. Now that we have our sprites named, we can start to create our function to check collisions. Let's put that right above the start zombie animation. Inside this function, we're going to create two arrays, one to hold the cats that the zombie has hit and one to hold the enemies that the zombie has hit. We'll start with the cats this time. So you can see on line 138, we're creating the array to hold the cats that the zombie has collided with. And we're determining what those cats are because we're using the enumerate child nodes with name and then we're passing in the cat. If it finds any nodes with the name of cat, we're creating an SCADE sprite node from that. And then we're using that sprite node and its frame to see if it collides or intersects with our zombies frame. If it does, we add it to the hit cats array. Once we have our hit cats array populated, we can loop through that and anytime we hit a cat, for now we're just going to print out that we hit a cat. Now you'll notice that there's a yellow exclamation. That's because we're not actually using the variable cat yet. We will momentarily. So for now you can just ignore that yellow exclamation point. Okay, now that we have our cats done, let's do a similar thing for our enemies. Once again, we're creating a hit enemies array. We're passing in the name enemy for our enumerate child nodes with name. Once we find a node with the name of enemy, we're creating an SK sprite node from that, and then we're checking to see if the enemy's frame intersects with the zombie's frame. If it does, we add it to our hit enemies array. Just like before, we'll loop through that array, and for now, we'll just use a print statement to know that it's working. There's one final thing to do before we build and run, and that's to call the check collisions function in the update statement. And we'll put that right here at the bottom. Let's build and run to see what we have. So 
So you can see here already, we're hitting this cat down here and you'll notice that the print statement hit cat is working. And when the enemy hits us, you'll notice that the hit enemy shows up in the log statement. It's kind of hard to see because it's flying through, but it is definitely working. So let's stop. Now that we know it's working, let's make it a little more interesting. How about every time the zombie hits a cat or an enemy, a sound plays? Well, you might have noticed that in the resources folder, there was a sounds folder. We want to drag that sounds folder into our project. Make sure that the copy items if needed is selected, create groups and add to targets zombie comic. If it is, hit finish. Now that we have our sounds added, we can use them. We'll use them by creating two constants, one for each sound, one for the enemies and one for the cats. So let's scroll up to the top of the class and get those added. Here you'll notice that we're creating two SK actions, each one playing a different sound, hitcat.wave and hitcatlady.wave. We'll use those in two separate functions, one for when the zombie hits the cat and one for when the zombie hits the lady. Now's a great time to add both of those. Scroll back down to where your other functions are, specifically the check collisions. And let's add two more functions right before the zombie animation one. So here we're creating zombie hit cats. We're passing in the sprite node. We're then saying remove that sprite node from the parent because we don't want it on the scene anymore. And then run the action, in this case, the cat collision sound, which will play the sound. Let's do another one for the enemy. Again, same principle here. We pass in the enemy sprite node so we know which one to remove from the scene, which is very important. And then we just run the enemy collision sound action. Now we just need to call those two functions. So back up here, which is easy to find thanks to our yellow exclamation points, we'll just go ahead and call each one of those passing in the appropriate sprite node. We'll start with our cat and then we'll move to our enemy. Now that we're calling our new functions, let's build and run to make sure we're hearing the sound. Meow. Meow. Well, we are definitely hearing the sound, but there is one more thing we can do to make this even better. Go ahead and stop the project. You might have noticed that we were calling the check collisions in the update method. That's down here. There's actually a different way that you can do this. You can use the did evaluate actions. You don't ever call this method directly. It's actually called exactly once per frame. So this is a great place to use our check collisions instead of the update method. So let's comment it out here and override our did evaluate actions and call our check collisions from there instead. What's really nice is this performs any scene specific updates that need to occur after the scene actions are evaluated. So it works really well. Now we're going to build and run. You won't see any difference, but I assure you it is definitely better for your game overall to use the did evaluate actions for something like these collisions. So you can see that it is definitely working. We're still hearing our sound, which means that our zombie and our cat and our zombie and our lady are definitely working with regard to their collisions. That's it for this video tutorial. And now we have a challenge waiting for you. Your challenge is to create a conga line of cats, because let's be honest, conga lines are cool. I hope you enjoyed watching this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.